Thank you so much, RJ, for the message. What I heard from myself as RJ was speaking, many times we, from that Hebrews 12, one verse, many times we hear of sin, sin being the thing that would prevent us from finishing the race well. But what I'm hearing from RJ is, and in that verse, it speaks of weights also. Uh, sins we hear all the time, but there are weights which can do as much damage as well. And from what we heard, weights like experiences from our past, events, our, things that may not necessarily be sinful, but those things can do as much damage. And what I'm hearing is I have to be careful. In Luke 21, verse 34, Jesus said there that we, we should take heed to ourselves, less drunkenness, suffering, and the cares of this world should distract us, and that day should come on us unawares. Take heed to yourselves, he said there. And I really praise God for the what I heard this morning. Sins I know of. What about the weights? All the weights that may appear good, but they are chains on my, imagine a guy running a race, but has a I don't know, a uh, 500 pound weight ball tied to his leg. Imagine trying to run a race like that. You're not going to make it. And even if you do, <laughs> everyone has gone home in the stadium and you, you're just finishing at the end when it's all over. We don't want that. We want to finish well, is what I'm hearing from RJ this morning. We can say Saul, yeah, that's all the story we heard. It was about an Old Testament guy. That was Saul in the Old Testament. I want you to think of another person who, who was so careful about running the race well. Paul, as you know. In Luke, uh, sorry, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let me just read Paul's experience for you. If this, if this man could be concerned and worried, not worried, but careful to make sure he ran well, how much more you and I? In 1 Corinthians chapter, 24, uh, chapter 9, I'm going to read 24 to the end, verse 24 to the end. So this is a man in the New Testament, a man, the man Paul, who would we, we would say this was a almost perfect kind of guy. Uh, if we thought of someone who was as close to Jesus in, in, uh, in life, you would think of Paul. But see the warning he gives to himself and to you and me also. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. He says there, know that those who run in a race, of those who run in a race, only one receives the prize. So he says to you and me, run that you may win that prize also. For every man who strives for the mastery, mastery of things is disciplined in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, earthly crown. But we run to receive an incorruptible prize. And he says of himself, of himself in verse 26, I therefore run... So and, and fight as not as one that beats the air, but I keep my body in discipline and bring into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I have planted churches, I have preached to everyone, I myself should be a castaway. That's quite a word. If you know, if this was not in the Bible, I wouldn't have believed Paul could say such a thing. But he's saying, after I have done all this ministry and everything for the Lord Jesus, if I have not disciplined myself and taken heed to my life, I should be a castaway. God is not a respecter of persons. And people argue that when he says castaway, he doesn't mean that he would, be, he would not make it to heaven and all of that. I'm not here to debate that. Whatever, that, uh, whatever people, people's opinions are, being a castaway before God is not a good thing. Believe, if you believe that, he would still have gotten in and out. I don't know. I just say that I don't want to be a castaway on that day. Even if I made it into heaven, what good is it I'm in here and still viewed as a castaway before the Lord? It's a serious thing is what I'm trying to say. And this was coming from a man who was saved, who had done such ministry for the Lord, but is warning you and me, if you don't take heed to your life as a Christian, you could be a castaway. It's there. Read it on your own. This is Paul speaking of the fear he had of him. In 
say that. Take heed to your life as a Christian. If you're not disciplined to live day by day until Jesus comes, until you die, you could be a castaway. Define it whatever you, way you want to, but it's there. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 that Ajay started with, it says to cast away the sin and the weights that easily disrupts us or weights or weighs us down so we might run the race with patience. That word patience, meaning day by day, you must not get tired. God always tests our patience. In fact, the race of a Christian is one of patience. You began well like Saul. Are you going to continue patiently till the end? If you don't, you won't run that race with victory till the very end. Let me close with this verse in Romans chapter 2. This is Paul speaking again. Romans chapter 2. It says in verse 6, God will render to every man according to their deeds. To those who with patient continuance every day, every day, patiently continuing in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality. God will give them honor, immortality, and eternal life. But to those who are contentious, who do not obey the truth, the truth you heard this morning, who do not obey, uh, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, God, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, God will grant them indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. But he'll give glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good, to the Jew first, to the Gentile. Verse 11, for God is not a respecter of persons. I hope to really ponder on what I heard this morning. I hope you will do also. God is not a respecter of persons. He didn't respect Paul. He didn't respect uh, James, anyone. If you run the race, look into Jesus faithfully to the end, you will receive that crown. And if you don't, according to 1 Corinthians 9 there, it's possible that a man be a cast, a Christian. That's Paul speaking of himself. I have done all these things, but I took my walk loosely. My fear is that I will be a castaway. God forbid that be the case for any of us here. Hebrews 6, 12 says, to have them as examples, those who with pay, faith and patience inherit the promise. You believe in Jesus, praise God. But that's not enough. Faith with patience. You believe great, but patiently continuing, continuing every day till the end. God, there's a reason why God keeps saying these things, because he knows that there are distractions, there are weights, there are things that want to pull us back. But by the grace of God, we're going to press on every day to the end, patiently. Patience means it doesn't feel good. I want to do something else that my flesh wants, but I say no. I'm going to patiently continue that which God has set before me in Jesus Christ. I hope we take this seriously because just saying I'm a Christian, I believe, I believe, but how is it with you now? Are you patiently and faithfully walking in the ways of Christ, lest I be a castaway? You take it wherever you, any other, any way you want to think, but I believe God's word. I believe what Paul says, the warning Paul gives of himself. I take it to myself. If I'm not careful and patiently walking with Jesus every day, I could be a castaway. But I trust, I, I'm sure better things of you and I, but those better things come as we faithfully walk with Jesus, lest we be a Saul. God forbid that to be the case. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, brothers. Um, in Proverbs 16, <clears throat> um, I read this verse, uh, and it it hit me um, pretty hard. Uh, 
Proverbs 16 and 5. And it made me look at pride as, or I couldn't casually look at pride anymore. I couldn't have a casual attitude toward the pride in my life. Um, in it's Proverbs 16 and 5, everyone who is proud, proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Surely he will not go unpunished. Um, when I read that verse um, not too long ago, it really hit me. Um, and pride in my heart became exceedingly sinful. And, and I couldn't have a casual attitude toward pride anymore in my heart. I couldn't just brush it off or and uh, one day I'll I'll be humble or it's a, a road to humility it may take a long time but as we heard today it took seven days for uh, for just an inkling of pride to be there and he totally turned the other way and um, and for something uh, and as I read and continue to meditate on it I found out that humility and pride are primarily before the Lord. The Bible said pride in heart, uh, those who are proud in their heart is an abomination to the Lord. Uh, just like in Luke 1 and 51, uh, I believe it's called the Song of, Song of Mary, or um, Luke 1, and 51, either the song or the, um, or even prophecy uh, of Mary, uh, starting at uh, Luke 1, 51, he has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. Um, and and as I ponder on that, that God, our our righteousness, our just our life is before the Lord, uh, especially our humility, and especially our pride is before the Lord. How does the Lord see my heart? Uh, uh, and if I'm proud in heart, I'm an abomination to the Lord. And I take that literally as the scripture said it. And when I find pride in my heart, I say, Lord, I'm an abomination before you. And I repent. I'm sorry. I had high thoughts for myself. I had uh, these thoughts in my heart. I looked down on someone. I was proud about something that I did or um, or better than someone, comparing myself with others. So, Lord, I was an abomination unto you, Lord. I'm sorry. And for me to be an abomination to the Lord, that's to, that's horrible. To me, we think about abominations as, you know, what we see going on in uh, man with man, women with women, and all these different things that we see. And the scripture says an abomination unto, you, unto the Lord. But if I'm proud in my heart, I'm an abomination to the Lord. And, and I have to cleanse myself of that. And if I have, and, and that's why I know that it is before the Lord. Because for a long time I used to, you have this, this uh, craving to, uh, to be humble before people, have a humility before people, or uh, I don't want to appear proud before people. So, which is all I'm coming to the point to where it's it's meaningless. Uh, if someone says I'm a humble person, what congratulations? Uh, what what does that mean? Like now they okay now they believe I'm humble. Now what? It it, it doesn't carry any weight. Uh, but if the Lord can look at my heart. And see humility, um, and as as we said, and as uh, we read, uh, we saw earlier, uh, Matthew eleven, um, especially when it's when it's when it's something that I deal with, or 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 a proud thought, or something that keeps coming back. I say, Lord, you have to help me with this, because you know in my heart, I don't want to be an abomination to you. Um, in Matthew eleven and twenty eight, it said, "Come to me." All who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus walked this earth um, 
humble in his heart before the Father. Um, and once he, once the God had given him approval, it didn't really matter what anyone else thought. Um, he didn't even have to justify himself when he did something that appeared proud. Um, and because I have that, have that um, temptation, like if I something comes across proud, I want to justify it. Uh, if it came from a sincere place in my heart, and I and, and I'm humble in my heart, however it came across. It really doesn't really matter. That's how Jesus, when he was cleansing the temple, I remember when I, uh, I didn't have an understanding of who God was. Um, I was watching a, uh, when I was younger, I was watching a TV program, um, and they they done a dramatic depiction of Jesus cleansing out the temple, and they showed Jesus knocking over tables and stuff. I was like, who do these people think they are portraying my Jesus like that? I, I was like, that's no way that that could be Jesus Christ doing those things. To me, it looked proud. But as I continue to look at the scripture and I continue to grow, um, and as we hear our teachings now, um, Jesus was did what his father told him to do. And that was the humility. And it, 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 he, didn't, he didn't try to justify it. The disciples just knew, okay, the zeal of the house of the Lord has burned me up. Jesus didn't sit down and tell them that. Um, and uh, so that that's something that, that um, I'm continuing to uh, be mindful of and don't have a casual attitude toward the pride in my life, especially in my heart. Um, and especially as we heard today that it took seven, just in the span of seven days, corruption set in and... Uh, and and as he continued to go down that road, you could see that it was it could be harder and harder for him to turn back. That he began to do things that he probably never would have done when he was hiding in the baggage. He never would have thought that he would take the sacrifice or do the do the work of a priest uh, or even try to kill someone. Um, and all those things that came just because of something in his heart, because he was lifted up in his heart. Um, and I want to take that. Um, Seriously, anytime it shows up, um, I pray to the Lord that, Lord, you will show me. Uh, I don't want to know after the fact, but I want to you to show me when I'm doing it, when when it's happening. Lord, help me. I don't want to be an abomination to the Lord uh, in your sight. Um, and But if we continue to go to the Lord, continue to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he was proud. I mean, he was uh, humble in his heart. He wasn't proud. Uh, he was gentle and humble in his heart uh, before the Father. And I can be the same way if I continue to look to him and he gives me his grace and he gives me his power.